Hello, Paul Handler here. That glove read, remember me. Uh, been away for a while, apologize for the delay, but just had a lot of things going on here. Uh, might point out, uh, in case uh, you think you're seeing things, one of my glasses is tinted, the other one is clear. I had cataract surgery a couple months back and I uh, got 20-20 vision out of that eye and it just has a clear lens in it. We'll be getting another one done here shortly. But I've uh, been away from a while and I thought I'd try to get back. I've got a lot of requests for videos. Today we're going to do something a little different than the videos I've done in the past. Uh, as you saw in the introduction of the cottonwood bark carvings uh, on the wall behind me and then there was a, uh, well most of them were all cottonwood bark. Uh, and then also uh, the one that I demonstrated on carving the hard maple and the uh, lighter pine or pine knot. I love carving and uh, all of those cottonwood bark carvings that I showed in the introduction with the couple, exception of a couple of them were all done by uh, a gentleman up in Trenton, Tennessee, Gorton and uh, his last name uh, escapes me but I'll put a link to his eBay website. He sells these cottonwood bark carvings and they're very reasonable. I highly recommend you checking them out. But the uh, what's amazing about all these carvings is what little carvings I have done in the past have been with carving tools, traditional knives and gouges etc. But uh, I love the, the, the beauty and the patina in all of the uh, pine knots, but they are hard as rocks. It's a lighter, it's a portion on a pine tree where the limbs branch out. Uh, so this tool that I came up with, we're going to be talking about in this first video, is an idea. It was kind of a, a branch off from a, a commercially made tool that worked very, very similar to what you saw in the demonstration with the exception it was a lot wider. So I wanted something that would give me a smaller kerf and I also wanted something that would aggressively attack the, uh, the hard pine. Now this tool, like any other tool that you put in a, a spinning motor, a mill, or a lathe, or whatever, it's dangerous. And so I caution you, if you decide to make one of these, they're very easy to make, and that's what we're going to try to accomplish in the video, show you how to make the tool. Be extremely careful. Uh, don't forget we have things like this. They're carving gloves that supposedly would break the impact of a, of a sharp tool. Uh, I don't know what they would do on the rotary tool, but I don't wish to test it. And you got to use these guys, guys. I mean... You don't appreciate your eyeballs until you have cataract surgery and you realize how blessed you are to have good vision. So with that said, uh, we'll go in and take a look at this tool, dissect it, see what you, what's involved. There's not going to be a lot of machining involved in this, a little bit of grinding. But uh, So without any further ado, let's take a look at this guy and see what we could do to make one. Here's a picture of the uh, cutter that we were using in the intro. And here's the components that make up the two. You've got a standard mandrel. Uh, this happens to be an eighth of an inch shaft. They also come in 5 30 seconds. My recommendation would be to use the, the heavier one, the eighth of an inch. And then we have two bushings that fit on the inside of the cutter. Now this cutter started out as a slitting saw and we'll uh, scatter a few slitting saws around here. There's a couple there. These are typically used in metalworking for you woodworkers. Uh, they're typically used in uh, metalworking for uh, slotting or, or cutting fine slits as the name indicates in uh, in metal however uh, they're extremely precision made all of the teeth around the perimeter are registered to the center hole very accurately which gives us the ability to make this particular style cutter that we're going to make and talk about here so they come in different thicknesses different diameters my recommendation 
for mounting one in a rotary tool, whether it's a Dremel tool or some other electric handheld tool, a Fordham tool, etc. My recommendation would be to keep the diameter of the slitting saw blade around the one inch. Now there's a one inch blade here. It's uh, 36 thousandths thick. They, they'll go up to width up to an eighth of an inch or so. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to lay out a pre precision uh, lines on the, scribe them on the slitting saw and we're going to take it over to the grinder and grind down a, uh, a flat and convert that circle into a triangle. The, uh, as I said earlier, I kind of got this idea from a commercially made tool. I don't presently have one, but I also took a carbide insert uh, and mounted it to a, a mandrel. And it worked fairly decent. It cut. Uh, the problem was most of the inserts were too thick. So I needed something a little bit thinner. And that's where I came up with, hey, let's just take a slitting saw and convert it to a, uh, a triangle. The interesting thing about this tool, uh, hopefully you, you kind of caught this in the uh, introduction there where I was chopping away on the, the pine knot as well as the hard maple. It's fairly, if there's a such thing as a, a, a high speed cutter rotating fairly close to your fingers, it's fairly safe. And what I mean by that, if you keep your fingers behind the cutter and don't get too aggressive with it and just use a light touch, it, uh, it very seldom does it want to grab and, and run with you like a saw blade or a cutter that was, had teeth around the perimeter of it. So by eliminating the bulk of the teeth on this slitting saw blade, we've made something that's still got the ability to cut, but it's a little more user friendly as, as far as safety goes. Uh, don't low yourself to thinking these are not unsafe tools. They, they will cut you. So with that, uh, let me show you the, there's two, two machining operations. The first, and, and probably the easiest, is taking a piece of either 3 8 inch brass or 12L14. This is 12L14 here. And what I did is I went in and center drilled it and drilled a hole in there that would receive a clearance hole that would receive the uh, the screw that locks the, the cutter on. The other thing you have to do is cut a shoulder onto the uh, the bushings here, the adapters, and that shoulder needs to fit in the, the saw blade pretty close. I mean you don't want a, a sloppy fit but you don't have to beat it in. It's just a you know like a zero half a thousandth clearance fit. The, the critical thing is, is when you machine these, uh, I believe that one's magnetized or something is, when you machine these bushings, uh, you want to accurately measure the step and the offset of the bushing that goes inside the hole. And you measure both of them and add the, the two dimensions and it should be somewhere four to six thousandths smaller than the thickness of the blade. And what that enables you to do is when you put these guys together, when you put the bushet on each side of the, uh, uh, the cutter, there will be a space, an air gap between one bushing and the other. So when you put the set screw in and tighten it, it will lock it down to the mandrel. Otherwise, you're not going to get enough bite to lock the blade and it'll end up slipping on you. So, without moving the camera here uh, a lot, I think I can talk you through this. But what we want, what you need to do, is make you a, a mandrel that will receive your saw blade. And by the way, these most of these cutters that I make out of the slitting saws are high-speed steel. You can make them out of carbide. 
the carbide will probably last a little longer, but it's offset by the increased amount of time that's required to, to, to grind them on a diamond wheel, or whatever. So what I do, I, I put this in the vise so that it's vertical, put layout die on the uh, perimeter or, or one flat of it, and with it standing vertical in the vise, uh, don't be able to quite get it in here. Okay, let's uh, let's just break here a second. I'll set it up on the uh, in the vise. I'm lazy today, so we've got our blank or our, our fresh slitting saw blade that we're going to convert, and uh, you lay you a master, and one way to uh, to check these things if, uh, when you first make one, if you'll measure from the outside teeth to the f uh, flat that you've ground, uh, and get it balanced so that distance is uh, the same on all three flats or all three sides of the triangle, uh, you'll be pretty darn close. They, they have to be off quite a bit to cause a, a vibration issue. So with this guy laying up there, the master laying up on, you just go around and scribe your reference lines, and you're going to use these reference lines when you grind away the surplus material. And it's, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing is when you, when you go over to the grinder to grind these guys, uh, keep you some water nearby, keep these things cool, don't, don't burn them or overheat them. But it's just a simple matter of grinding on your, your grinder up to that line this line and this line and uh, when you're uh, when you're all done you should have a cutter that looks like that by the way let me point something out here I, some of you guys might have noticed it you notice I'm missing my left thumbnail that was not a machine or a woodworking uh, oops or malfunction that I had melanoma under my thumbnail and that's where they went in and cut out the bed and all of my nail and part of the bone in order to get rid of the melanoma this was I don't know, 20 years ago so it, it makes it great for dipping snuff it makes a nice little container to hold your hold your snuff in if you're into that so once you uh, once you get your blade ground and got your bushings, and again, uh, the critical thing on these bushings, the, the step or the offset in the middle of them, you want it to be four or five thousandths smaller than uh, the thickness of the blade. Not a rocket scientist. Okay? The uh, only other thing to note here is when you when you install your bushings and get ready to put your screw through and attach it to the end of the mandrel, you want the orientation such that when uh, if say your your motorized tool or whatever is turning clockwise, you put the mandrel on here. You want the uh, the tooth of the cutter to be cutting into in the same direction as your your tool is spinning so that the uh, okay so that the tooth is cutting into the wood. If you put them on backwards I don't know they probably won't cut very well. So that's all it is to it guys. The uh, if you make one just take it slow, be careful, and uh, I realize this video is, uh, is not for everybody in the world. However, I've got several new videos planned, and uh, we uh, will peck away at these. And, uh, you know, hit that bell on your uh, YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, and you'll get alerted when they, came up, when they come out. If... Uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me two thumbs down. And we'll wrap it up with that.